for trading newsletters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we'd like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. I'm listening. No? No? Don't hear it. Is it there? No? Didn't hear it. Okay, well, they missed it today. Uh, what else do we have going on? Well, a lot of earnings. Uh, as we said, if you were uh, looking for volatility uh, and praying for it on Monday, you've got it now. Uh, the question is whether or not you were on the right side of that volatility, uh, but you can never tell. Anyway, uh, as we're looking at things, uh, market's really trying to make a decision on whether it can go higher. Getting kind of close to uh, the end of the month fund buying, which actually starts a week from um, today, really in, uh, I mean, kind of a little bit next Wednesday, but uh, and you might even get a little bit on Tuesday. But I think it's probably really gonna get uh, big in the uh, second half of next week. Question is whether or not uh, they can hold this market up um, after that. Uh, I suspect that we're going to start seeing stocks sell off, individual stocks start selling off uh, significantly in the next few days. Uh, there's going to be a, a, a big difference between the winners and the losers. We talked earlier in the week about the summation index for the New York Stock Exchange showing, uh, and the NASDAQ, too, showing how weak, uh, um, well, let me put it this way, how few stocks were pushing the indexes higher. So I wasn't really thinking that we were going to get uh, much higher. And of course, uh, we continue to look at the very weak numbers in uh, volume uh, in all of the markets. In fact, we're just at about 4 billion shares right now uh, in the CBOE consolidated tape. I had some questions about that too, and uh, we will answer those uh, in the show. I'll bring the uh, chart up from the CBOE, and I'll, exp I'll I'll let you know what's actually going on and what these numbers mean. A lot of people were asking that I had sent the uh, CBOE uh, market share volatility um, page to, so we'll bring that up. Um, we continue to watch uh, the winners and the losers. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of people talking about uh, Tesla. Um, I'm trying to think whether or not everybody would like to talk about just uh, electronic uh, electric vehicles in general for the Tom O'Brien uh, Tech Insider portion of the last half hour of tomorrow night or tomorrow's close. And, uh, and well, we'll see. Anyway, maybe you can email me and see if you want. I think there's a lot to be uh, said. I think I could do about 20 minutes on it today just off the top of my head much less not uh, asking or uh, looking into it fairly far. Uh, but uh, a lot of things that just seem kind of weird, I brought it up um, a number of places. And uh, I, I think this may be the most teachable moment. Maybe even write a book just on uh, the, uh, the bu uh, bubbles in individual stocks that I've seen over the years. But Maybe Tesla is going to be the uh, the one that they write the textbooks about because uh, this seems like even after the horrible earnings, um, I was b busy reading the uh, chat blogs, which are not a lot of use uh, to anybody. But they, uh, what I wanted to make sure was that it, that there were still people that just believed in Tesla. Didn't matter if it's going to zero. It's going to a million bucks. If we just hold on, 
the same thing that people were talking about in Bitcoin was at 20,000. It's going to 100,000. Uh, when it came to $10,000, they were sure it was going to go to 15,000. When it got to 5,000, they sure it was going to go to 7,500 again. When it got down to 3,300, well, it finally had a bounce. But uh, generally, you're wrong for a long time. And uh, there's one thing that I do say, which is uh, there's nothing wrong. Uh, you know, you're going to be wrong in the stock market a lot uh, if you play the game for a while. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. You just get out. But uh, I'm sure one thing, and that is that there are people that are so bought in to uh, what uh, Elon Musk has uh, said that it doesn't matter what the stock price does. They're, they're in it to win it. They're going to be there forever. And, uh, of course, the first stock that I ever – I really started trading – and investing in about 1994, but I think it was about 1995 or six, I think it was 1996, uh, was iOmega. These folks, um, well, the Tesla folks, I mean, they're just a pale imitation of, uh, or I mean, the iOmega people were just a pale imitation of what the Tesla people are now. Name calling, yelling, screaming, um, even Elon Musk, uh, trying to uh, put restraining orders on people that are saying things he doesn't like. Um, just uh, uh, just the kind of insane stuff that only appeals to people that are truly in a cult. And I think that's probably the best way to describe it. There, there becomes a cult, and no matter what happens, uh, there is a huge uh, effort inside the cult to make sure that nothing comes in that can break their uh, belief system about what that cult is about. And uh, I see that continuing on today. So uh, we'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's always a bunch of folks, people. Uh, what do I think about the EV market in China? Um, I think it's going to be fairly big. What I don't understand is that uh, – that Everybody thinks that the Chinese people are going to let anybody else come in there and build a factory and make money. I mean, they, it's against everything that they believe in. They've sent at least 30 companies that I can remember uh, packing, uh, Facebook, Google, everybody that thought they were going to come in there and clean up. They got one rule, and that is, uh, as an American, your money is for us to steal or take or lie to you, or whatever it takes. We're gonna copy what you got. You may come here, we'll see how you do things, and then we'll kick you out. And that's been it. Um, it's been a long time like that. I just, uh, some, some games you just can't win, and I don't understand that um, a lot of people think that they're gonna allow uh, somebody to come in there and really clean up. Um, I think Kentucky Fried Chicken is the only one that done well if i'm not mistaken but there might be some other ones we're going to go to break i got some more questions to answer uh executive and middle management tesla has been in such a flux for four years as documented by chain ups we'll be back in a minute The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And, uh, eh, what can you say? Anyway, uh, we were talking about Tesla and had a couple of questions come in. Of course, you can always email me at path at tfnn.com. We'll be glad to, uh, to uh, take your uh, email or 877-927-6648. What I was saying is it's just a teachable moment. And uh, one of the things I always thought interesting is when CEOs spend a lot of time hating on short sellers. Uh, and generally, it's because there's a reason to short the company. Uh, you can't, if the company's good, you're not going to put it out of business. Uh, if there's problems, uh, as uh, the uh, the uh, gentleman that hit, um, Jim Chanos hit uh, Enron correctly, um, he calls uh, short sellers real-time financial detectives because they actually find out what's going on, or at least the fundamental short sellers, let me put it that way, a real-time uh uh, uh, financial detectives, because they know what's going on. Um, they look at the books. They do the, the homework, which almost no one is willing to do. I don't spend a lot of time on uh, fundamentals, uh, i.e. the books. I look at the big market, and it's pretty easy for me to see that there are, there's a lot of competition uh, coming on. And uh, I was actually looking at those companies this morning. Uh, and uh, the Mercedes-Benz one looks pretty cool. The Audi e-tron looked neat. If I was looking for a sports car, uh, the uh, Kai, uh, I want to call it a Cayenne, but it's a, it's a K-Can, K-Can from Porsche. Uh, looked very neat. Anyway, uh, the other thing I was asking the other day was with uh, all these EVs supposedly running everybody out of business in the, in the gasoline market, why was uh, the big lithium company in Chile doing rather horribly? Man, if there was going to be the kind of indentation uh, uh, of uh, huge selling of electric vehicles, I think it'd be very tough to get the amount of lithium that they need. And, of course, it's been a bad week for Musk before his capsule blew up. Uh, all I can think of every time I see that is, 
Where's your, uh, what was it, stripes? Uh, where's your commanding officer? Blown up, sir. Uh, but uh, not a good thing. And, of course, I'm a big proponent of SpaceX. I think they're doing a lot of the very smart things. Uh, but, uh, man, that, eh, eh, no mulligan there. If you blow up everybody in the capsule, kind of, kind of uh, defeats the purpose, doesn't it? Very interesting design choice that they did by putting the rockets on the side of the capsule itself. Uh, but uh, eh, we'll talk more about that. Back to uh, a uh, show already in progress where we haven't even got into uh, the history. In fact, why don't we do the history, and then we'll move on. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1859 uh, at uh, Port Said, Egypt, Ground is broken for the Suez Canal, an artificial uh, waterway intended to stretch 101 miles across the Isthmus of Suez and connected to the Mediterranean and the Red Seas. Ferdinand Lesapi, the French diplomat who organized the colossal undertaking to deliver the Pixac blow that inaugurated the construction, really didn't get fired up till about uh, 1875. And of course, uh, steam shovels, all that stuff really started coming. Um, surprisingly enough, this isn't the first canal that was made there. Uh, back to the times of uh, the Egyptians, uh, 2,000 years before, they'd been making canals, uh, but for very small ships. First one was only like about 75 feet wide and 25 feet deep, so a lot of the heavier freighters could not go through there. They widened it after a couple of years, uh, started being... Uh, uh, used fairly uh, regularly. There was a 99-year lease, uh, lease on it that didn't make it until eight, uh, 1950, where they threw the British out of Egypt and uh, some of the surrounding countries. And, of course, then um, a lot of uh, uh, saber-rattling and wars, uh, the Seven-Day War, uh, a bunch of other things happened where it was closed periodically. Uh, but uh, even to this day, and yeah, somewhere between 50 and 100 ships go through it every day. But uh, eh, just that little uh, little cut right there where you can uh, shave off going around the Horn of Africa uh, made all the difference in the world. We'll go back to uh, a few things, and that is um, maybe we should talk about this tomorrow with Tom O'Brien. But I really love there's a couple of books uh, when I was uh, a product manager uh, that I loved. One of them was from a, a, a guy named David O, and it was called Marketing High Technology. And he always had this theory uh, that there was kind of a, a kind of a bell curve, and at a certain point in the bell curve, uh, that's when things normally hit the fan. And it's where you go from early adopters uh, to the main street uh, adoption of uh, a, a larger market the big market, where the big, big, big money is made. And I was speculating that last year that's kind of where Tesla had become. They got over the people uh, that want to be smug and say that they uh, drive a Tesla. Don't say that all people are smug. But for years, uh, the, the Nissan Leaf people were the smuggest in the world, maybe edged out in the last couple of years by the uh, Tesla folk. Uh, but... Uh, doesn't mean that they're all bad. This means some of them um, were a little bit too smug. Um, but when you're done with those folks, you've got to actually take it to the big top, to the big time, to the big game. If you're playing in the minors and you go to the majors, there's a lot of times uh, there's a big culture shock. And uh, if anybody wants links to those books, I'll be glad to send them to them. Another book that I, I found very interesting, actually a series of books that are kind of the Bibles for everybody in disruption in Silicon Valley are by a guy that we had on the show uh, six or seven years ago. And his name is uh, Christensen. He writes uh, about the uh, innovator's dilemma, a lot of uh, ins and outs, but he did a lot of book work on hard drive manufacturers that won and lost uh, from the beginning of time. And one of the reasons he did that was there was incredibly good data 
uh, because the magazines actually published it over a number of years. So there was something to go back to. A lot of times there's not that kind of data today. Uh, but uh, he came up with some theories, and they've continued to refine and move those theories together. Uh, but there are a lot about what's happening. And there is this kind of uh, – they actually uh, – they actually call it the bowling alley. You kind of have this early honeymoon period. And then it's like going from the minors to the majors in baseball. You, you, you find out what major league pitching is actually all about uh, and traveling and doing a lot of things that you don't do when you're in the minors. And that's kind of it. And uh, like I said, I could probably write a book because it is a incredible uh, teachable moment for uh, how stocks do fundamentally, not so much technically. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We had kind of another question. We're not going to even get to much in the way of stocks or um, stock movement, I think, today, if we keep going this way. But a very good question, and that is... Uh, Wanted somebody had my question on uh, cannabis uh, companies or the industry, and uh, the, I just I, I my mother had a problem with taking drugs. They were prescription drugs, uh, but it was a uh, part of the worst part of my childhood. She thought it was a pill for everything, and I can't hardly take an aspirin now 
I kind of, it's like somebody that was a alcoholic that rails against anybody else drinking. I just, I can't see it, don't understand it, don't want to be around it. And so I'm not going to be fairly impartial about who's going to win or lose in the, uh, in the uh, weed business. I can tell you, though, that almost from uh, the inception of history, you don't want to be in the business that everybody's calling on the gold mine. You want to be selling the picks and the shovels. You want to be selling, uh, I said, the best business to probably be in is in Scott's miracle Grow uh, and fertilizer. I've always thought that everybody would raise the prices and they would continue to uh, uh, tax it to the point that everybody just grew it in their backyard uh, because that's the way government is. They can't help but kill the goose that lays the golden egg. So the, my uh, uh, belief that government is inherently evil, at least to some point or another, more of a libertarian than anything else, um, is that, you know, they can kill it. I remember when they brought uh, uh, the, uh, what was it, the lotto. Uh, to the state I was leaving, living in, and they told everybody all the money was going to go to the schools. And then 10 years later, they wanted to raise taxes for money to go to the schools because uh, they'd all looted all that money the uh, local state people had. Uh, anytime they say it's for the children or the, or the schools or anything else, uh, just grab your wallet. They're just lying to you. But anyway, uh, what I was going to say is you do, uh, I mean, the big... Uh, companies that have lasted out of the gold rush uh, were a lot of the companies that made tools. And the and Levi Jeans, um, one of the big ones. In fact, didn't he die on the Titanic? I think he did. Levi Strauss. But uh, you've got a, uh, a lot of companies, but it's almost always the companies surrounding the companies. And I, I, I would go back to IBM PCs. Uh, it wasn't the, it wasn't the people selling the hardware that made the money for the most part. It was Microsoft now making money again. Uh, it was all those other companies making software for it. They made thousands and thousands of times what IBM did uh, in selling the IBM PC. And uh, you know now that is not true. And I think that's the the very worst part of it for uh, software on phones, uh, the very little money actually being made. Uh, Apple says uh, how much money that they actually have uh, given back to programmers. Uh, and that's why generally those things die out. There are not enough people that can make money uh, on whatever. And occasionally there's a guy that runs Flappy Birds and he makes a couple million bucks. Uh, but if you it took the amount of apps and the hours it took for the iPhone, for the millions of apps they have, the average money made on everything is about a buck an hour. That's how much money that Apple has been able to give back to the people that have written software. Uh, for Windows PCs, uh, that average is more like 120 bucks. So you can see when Apple destroyed the music industry. Uh, they also at least have some level of a problem in destroying the software business. Now, if you're a big company, you write your own app, that's kind of a cost of business going forward. You're not going to really make the money with that app. You're going to be able to drag the folks in uh, to your ecosystem maybe with that app like Facebook or something else. But it, it's a lot different. Anyway, uh, we've been uh, meandering. And I, I think this one episode is enough for me to win uh, the digressing award once again at TFNN. Uh, but we'll go and start looking at some charts here. Uh, I've uh, digressed long enough. Um, let's go ahead and look at, I, like I said, volume's been light. Uh, volume was light again yesterday. Uh, 2.3 billion shares as we uh, talk right now. Uh, for the market, we keep kind of coming up to these levels. But this is where you want to see some kind of movement uh, with some kind of volume. And at uh, 2931, let's call it 2932 on the S&P cash, this, you know, you, you should be able to drag almost every company out of the mud with Facebook and Microsoft 
last night. Um, that it's not doing it, that we're having a lot of companies uh, actually reverse off these highs uh, is problematic. But it doesn't mean it's time uh, to uh, pull the trigger and go short. As I said, my newsletter today, you're waiting for uh, them, or you're waiting to see them, uh, the whites of their eyes. That was in the Revolutionary War. I forgot who said that. Maybe it was Washington. Uh, wait until you see the whites of their eyes. Uh, rifles weren't all that accurate back then. <laughs> so uh, they didn't want to have a bunch of people, and it took a minute to reload. So they wanted to wait and make sure that the first shot you got actually counted. Um, I think this is one where you want to think more like a sniper uh, than having a shotgun and blasting around everywhere. Uh, I believe that the uh, stocks to probably uh, short are going to be um, individually one until probably the first week of May, where the entire market will probably start to roll. But certainly uh, a lot of the parabolic moves that we've seen in this market already uh, have uh, are setting up. For any small pullback, a little pop, pop our high, excuse me, pop higher, and you'd be back to these. Now, one of the things I wanted to bring up was uh, in Amazon a while ago, uh, there was literally nothing to say that the uh, stock was going to pull back, and it did, and it pulled back rather significantly. I'm going to go back to that period where I pretty much pegged it. Uh, and it goes back to uh, 2017, uh, where you got to a thousand bucks, and it came all the way back, maybe about 60 bucks. I think maybe the one I was looking at actually, where it came back to about, uh, to, to, I'm thinking it came back from about 900 to 750. Maybe I'm not going back far enough. Can't remember. Let's go back a little farther. I'll find it. Because I remember it was at about a thousand, and it came back to about seven fifty, fairly quickly, and it, it did nothing but go higher since then. Uh, but at some point, you need a fairly decent pullback uh, to make it look like it's a deal again. Uh, eventually, everybody just gets a little nervous about buying a stock that continues to go higher, and uh, you get that giant uh, clear air. They, they call it. Fly in flying clear air turbulence, where you're flying, everything's wonderful, and all of a sudden the bottom drops out. And that's when no one has their seat belts on, and people bounce all around the cabin. You hear about it every once in a while, a couple times a year. Clear air turbulence. I suspect that we might have that going forward. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. After the bell tonight, we've got Amazon, Intel, Starbucks, Grubhub, Cypress Semi, Illumina, uh, Alaskan Air Group, uh, Capital One Financial, Aflac, Southwestern Energy, Juniper Networks, Proofpoint, Discover Financial Services, Log Me In, which used to be, I don't know why they changed the name, but that used to be the uh, uh, PC Anywhere folks, and they've gotten into um, kind of Skype-like programs. Mattel, Shutterfly, SkyWest, Nautis Medical, no, uh, Mohawk Industries, uh, Principal Financial Group, and VeriSign. Mohawk is the one I'm going to be watching probably closely because it's very tied to the housing business, which is high, tied to the U.S. economy. So I'd be very interested to see what they say tonight, not so much play it as be uh, uh, as uh, see what they have to say. But uh, a full uh, a full cornucopia of earnings after the bell tonight with Tom O'Brien. Um, as we uh, talking about Tesla, I just wanted to look at it on the, um, on the uh, chart here for a moment. Uh, there's not a lot to be said other than the fact that it's down and breaking down. Uh, there's a bigger fundamental problem with Tesla, and that is below 240. There are a lot of these uh, uh, redeemable, um, what would you call them? warrants uh, that they have uh, that will turn into stock that will probably get sold. And it's kind of hard because this is extremely complicated legalese in these, but it sounds from what I've read that it's around 240 bucks. Uh, many of the folks I think that kept um, Tesla up yesterday after the bell, uh, even after they buried it after the earnings after five o'clock, uh, are th I think are trying to get it out of there because then uh, that creates kind of a almost a uh, a downdraft or a backdraft probably a backdraft of uh, selling uh, from those people to get the warrants and sell them as quickly as they can. Uh, but I think if it goes below like 240 bucks is what memory serves out there. Uh, if we have any other questions, make sure and send them to me at 877-927-6648. Other big movers uh, after the bell or uh, after the uh, earnings this morning uh, have been some Xilinx. Uh, there was a lot of discussions about Xilinx getting bought out like Altera did, and they've been talking that up for a month. Everybody's been around spending it. Um, and of course, uh, as most rumors go, uh, they are unfounded. Uh, and I think that's, I mean, they didn't have good numbers anyway, uh, but I think that a lot of this big run-up uh, is uh, from the uh, early week of uh, February was all about this uh, just drumbeat of people uh, banging about it. And then, of course, it comes down. Uh, in stock markets, you have kind of a uh, linear move higher and a logarithmic move or exponential move lower. 
Uh, some people say that uh, you walk to the top of the building, uh, but uh, the shorts jump off the top. And that's uh, basically what happens. Not a lot of signal in there to tell you that it was uh, time to pull the ripcord on this one, uh, but certainly kind of a surprise. Uh, Altera was bought by Intel, of course, Intel after the bell tonight. Uh, they're actually just starting to see a lot of the uh, synergies that they get back in there. Intel's kind of hanging up there fairly nicely. Um, but again, I think that the honeymoon's over for the new CEO. He's done a lot of things that they like. Uh, I wouldn't short it. Still don't think it's probably worth a short. But I think it's probably one of these stocks that you're going to have to wait until the current CEO gets X'd out and they put somebody in there that's kind of a, a, a big charger. We'll see how he does. Maybe he's not as bad as others uh, that we've had, but I've never seen anybody that really came on and added anything that was a CFO uh, to a high-tech company. They're generally set there as caretakers to make sure that the people that actually built the business can get out. And so I don't think it goes down fairly far. Now, they did kind of interestingly have a huge rollout this week of new processors and really never got any kind of bounce out of it. We may have seen that in the gap higher earlier this week. We've come back and filled half that gap. So if you are thinking, you know, that the market is just going to the moon with a rocket, um, doesn't look bad chart-wise, I think that there are much better, better stocks out there. Take a quick look at Microsoft and what it did. And I'm fairly amazed. I thought that this thing, uh, that was about it. Uh, but man, have they been able to turn the uh, web services business on. In fact, I'm, I was doing some consulting for somebody and they were asking me some questions because I know a bit about .NET programming. Uh, and they wanted to do it on Linux. And I said, well, they were trying to do it away. I said, well, Microsoft already does that. Um, it's all free. It's all open source. Why would you go and do it the hard way when you could get all the stuff for free? And I said, you know, lots of programmers around know it. Uh, what you're trying to do doesn't make a lot of sense. But, you know, the new CEO, since he's taken on, really hadn't made one bad step. I didn't think there was that much left to squeeze out of it, but they certainly have. The only thing you need to worry about is if uh, you get a lower close tomorrow on this and make this an abandoned baby or a shooting star up at the highs, but uh, continues to be a the you know, Amazon web service. I mean, the, their uh, Azure web services system continues uh, grew by seventy two percent, seventy five percent, and I think it goes back to um, the philosophy. Uh, that uh, Microsoft actually had. And I'm going to find it here because I think it is uh, another one of those teachable moments out here where they, um, where you find out that basically the CEO decided he was going to go right back uh, to what Bill Gates did uh, early on in building the company. And there was uh, in the, all the uh, uh, work that uh, work, all the, uh, uh, legalese going around the 2000 um, antitrust issues around Microsoft. What they found in the uh, documents everywhere, I'm sure they're smart enough not to put it in emails anymore, uh, but there was three words, embrace, extend, and extinguish. What they would do is embrace somebody else's technology, they would extend it so theirs was better than theirs, and then they would crush the opposition. And I it just seems to me like they're right back to doing the stuff that actually made them that kind of stuff, uh, made them the kind of uh, juggernaut that they were into 2000. Uh, and they, I think they're right back to doing it. They're just doing it quieter and much better. Uh, call info in Slack, okay? Call from uh, David, wants to discuss S&P 500. Let's go ahead. Oh, almost to the break. Are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're going to go to break here in about five okay. seconds. So uh, we'll do the last segment with you when okay. we come back. Okay, we'll be back okay, in a second. Thank you.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. You there? Hello? Yeah, I'm right here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. So what do you want okay. to discuss today? Yeah, the uh, S&P 500, do you see it testing the uh, December lows at all? I got a feeling about this. <laughs> um, well, the energy in the indexes is not as bad as some individual stocks. So um, the answer is I don't see it right now. There's no evidence. There's an evidence probably we're going to get some kind of pullback. Uh, but how deep that pullback is is kind of hard to say. I think 2,800, 2,700 is pretty uh, viewable if we continue this light volume at highs. What I don't think is that uh, there's any evidence to say that the December 26 low at 2,346 is getting tested uh, soon. Now, that evidence may develop. But uh, I was talking about it the other day. Uh, it's like driving in fog. You don't want to drive too fast and count your chickens before they hatch. Um, kind of just act like you're driving in fog and saying, okay, I'm good for the next 100 feet, but I got to keep an eye on it. I don't want to, I don't want to get too much baked into it. Um, the volume pretty much was very light, and it hasn't been going up. So I think we could pull back. But the only thing I'm thinking is, 
uh, maybe 2750, 2800 would be pretty good. And then maybe we even then take another run and have enough energy to go blow out the tops. But this has been a long run without any really significant pullbacks. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking that could we pull back uh, and get everybody all bearish and then try to push it higher? I think we could. There's not a lot of bearishness in the individual stocks. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the put call ratio on individual stocks is extremely low. So yeah. okay. that's what I'm looking at. Anyway, okay. thanks for the phone Thank call. You, David. Thank you, you bet. So when you can, not when you have to. And we will be back tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.